A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem I seek refuge with Allah Almighty from Satan the Rejected One. Bismillah Rahmani Rahim By the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Habibihi Muhammadiyu Wa Alihi Wa Sallam Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to our segment on Surah Al-Anam. Inshallah, today we will start the 5th and 6th ruku of Surah Al-Anam, verses 42 to 55. Before we begin, let's briefly go over what we covered in the previous segment of this surah in the 3rd and 4th ruku. Number 1. Shirk is a great injustice. Blaming Allah for our own doings and rejecting His signs also comes under the category of shirk. The main reason for this is our ego and self-interests. Number two, death is a reality that no one can deny or escape from. Everyone will have to face it one day. Similarly, it is also a fact that we will be raised after death and everyone will have to give an account for their actions. At that time, all the facts that were hidden from our eyes will be revealed. Number three, those who forget this reality and remain engaged in worldly affairs, they will be ashamed when they appear before their Lord and see the result of their deeds. They will wish to be sent back so they can do those good deeds that they didn't do. Whereas, those who remain mindful of this reality throughout their lives and live according to the teachings of Allah and His beloved Prophet وسلم, these people are the ones who attain success. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Qur'an by the grace of His Prophet Muhammad Amin. With this dua, let's begin the fifth and sixth ruku of Surah Al-Anam. Bismillah Rahim, verse 42. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمَامٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And we have already sent to nations before you. فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِالْبَاسَئِ وَالدَّرَّئِ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَدَّرَّعُونَ Then we seized them with poverty and hardship that perhaps they might humble themselves. In this verse, we see the word yatadarrauna highlighted. This means humble themselves. The previous ruku ended with the fact that when a punishment or some other difficult time comes upon you, you forget all the supports on which you used to lean on and sincerely turn to your Lord and Creator. You start calling the real master. And according to his law, he averts this calamity if he wills. In these verses, the reason for the revelation of such punishment and suffering has been explained. No punishment or suffering is desired. It is the law of Allah that before sending a punishment or a calamity on any town, He sends a messenger to warn the people of the consequences of their bad deeds and to call them to the right path. Surah al qasas verse 59, also mentions this. In this verse 42, it says, When people do not obey the words of the messenger and do whatever they desire, some kind of hardship is imposed on them, so they can realize their mistakes and shortcomings and ask Allah for forgiveness. Let's move on to verse 43. إِذْ جَعَاهُمْ بَسُونَ then why, when severe loss came to them, did they not humble themselves? But their hearts became hardened, and Satan beautified to them that which they were doing. In this verse, we see two words highlighted. Basuna, 
which means severe loss, and it's used to emphasize material loss. We also see the word zayana, which means beautified. It often happens that instead of listening to the words of the messengers, people want to do what they desire, and they resort to evil. They see their actions as good, and so they are reluctant to come to the right path. Surah al nahl verse 63, also illustrates their behavior and the result, where it says, By Allah, we did certainly send messengers to nations before you, but Satan beautified their deeds to them, and he is their ally today, and they will have a painful punishment. Let's move on to verse 44. فَلَمَّا نَاسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَّحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ So, when they forgot that by which they were reminded, we opened to them the gates of everything until حَتَّى إِذَا فَارِهُوا بِمَا أَوْتُوا أَخَدْنَهُمْ بَغْدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ when they rejoiced in that which they were given, we seized them suddenly, and they were disappointed. In this verse, we see a few words highlighted. Nasu means they forgot. Zukiru means they were reminded. Farihu means they rejoiced. And Moblesuna means disappointed. When these people forgot the advice and good words of the messengers and continued to seek the pleasures of the world, Allah opened the doors of worldliness for them. They became completely engrossed in the worldliness. So the time came when due to disobedience, punishment was imposed on them according to the law of retribution. This is an indicator that when things are going good in life, and we have all that we can imagine, we should be cautious because most mistakes are made when we have an abundance of things. We are not grateful and we forget our Lord. But when times are tough, we generally tend to turn towards a higher power for help. Let's move on to verse 45. Fakutea dabirul kaumi allazina talamu. So, the people who did, who did wrong the remnants were uprooted. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen And praise to Allah, Lord of the worlds. In this, wor in this verse, we see the word Dabiru, which means remnants or remains. Its basic meaning refers to the last and back part of something. There are no accidents in this universe. Whether we realize or not, every event has a reason behind it. One of the purposes of severe punishments is to protect against corruption, to prevent evil from spreading and to protect from evil influences. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 251 and Surah Al-Hajj verse 40 both mention this as well. According to the divine law, wrongdoers are uprooted, thanks to which the wrongdoing is suppressed for some time. Surah Al-Hijr, verse 66, also mentions this phenomenon of uprooting. Let's move on to verse 46. Qul, ara'aytum, in akhadallahu, sam'akum, wa absarakum, وَخَتَمَ أَلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَاتِكُمْ بِهِ Say, have you seen? If Allah should take away your hearing and your sight and set a seal upon your hearts, which deity other than Allah could bring them back? أَنْتُرْ كَيْفَ نُسَرِّفُ الْأَيَاتِ ثُمَّ Look how we diversify the signs, yet they still pick a side. 
In this verse, we see the word yastifun highlighted, and this means to pick a side. All of our abilities are a display of Allah's attributes. For example, the ability to hear is due to Allah's attribute of Sami, and the ability to see is due to Allah's attribute of Basir. These attributes have been granted to us so we can understand the purpose of our creation. The use of two different words related to seeing in this verse requires some consideration. We see the word Ara'aitum and Antar highlighted. The word Ara'aitum invites us to look within ourselves, while the word Antar refers to the external signs that we see with our physical eyes. We have always been reminded in the Quran by paying attention to the signs of Allah around us. People around us and their physical and mental states are also signs from Allah for us to contemplate on. Traditionally, we are trained to just look at the plants, animals, stars, and skies as signs. But humans are the biggest signs. So think about it and contemplate. Let's move on to verse 47. Kul ara aitakum in atakum adabullahi bakhtatan au jaharatan. Say, have you seen if the punishment of Allah should come to you unexpectedly or manifestly? Hal yuhlaku illa al qawmu adhalimun. Will any be destroyed but the wrongdoing people? If we misuse the abilities given to us, then we are wrongdoers, and punishment comes only on the wrongdoers. Surah Al-Hajj, verse 45, also mentions this. In this verse 47, it is also worth noting that no one will be accountable for anyone else's mistakes, and no one will earn a reward for anyone else's good deeds. We are all accountable for our own selves. Let's go on to verses 48 and 49. وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ And we send not the messengers, except as bringers of good tidings and warners. فَمَنْ أَمَانَ وَأَسْلَهَا فَلَا غَوْفٌ Alayhim Walahum Yazanun. So whoever believes and reforms, there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Wallazina Kazabu bi Ayatina Yamasuhumul Azabu Bima Kanu Yafsukun. But those who reject our signs, the punishment will touch them for their defiant disobedience. The whole purpose of sending messengers is to convey the message of Allah to people so they know that good deeds will bear good results and bad deeds will bear bad results. Everyone is aware that good and evil exists within us. It is at their discretion to accept or reject the message. If someone believes in this message and reforms himself, then he is removed from fear and sorrow. In verse 48, we see the word amana wa aslaha, which means with iman, we also need to seek to correct ourselves. When someone continues to follow the path of disobedience, even after the message has been revealed to him, then according to the divine law, he will be punished. Surah Al-Araf, verse 165, also mentions this. And so does Surah as sajda verse 20. Let's move on to verse 50. Kulla akulu lakum in the khazainul lahi. Say, I do not tell you that I have the depositories of Allah. Wala alamul ghayba. Or that I know the unseen. 
wala akulu lakum inni malakun. Nor do I tell you that I am an angel. In atabi'u illama yuha iliya. I only follow what is revealed to me. Kul hal yas tawi al ama wal basir. Say, is the blind equivalent to the seeing? Afala ta tafakkarun. Then will you not reflect? In this verse, we see the word khazainu highlighted, and this means depositories or treasures. Something kept for safekeeping, such as hidden reserves. We also see the word al ghayba highlighted, which means unseen. Something that exists, but can't be sensed. And then we also see the word yastawi highlighted, and that means equivalent. This verse states, Say to the people, Neither am I claiming that I have any treasures from Allah that I have kept with me, and I am not giving you a chance to benefit from it, nor do I have knowledge of the unseen, nor that I am an angel. The real difference between you and me is revelation. I have submitted myself to the revelation that comes down to me from Allah. And you also have this opportunity to beautify your lives by benefiting from this revelation. If you keep your eyes close to this fact, how can you gain insight? Think for a moment whether a visionary and a visionless person can be equal. Let's go on to verse 51. وَأَنذَرْ بِهِ الَّذِينَ يَخَفُونَ أَنْ يُحْشَرُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ And forewarned by it those who fear that they will be gathered before their Lord. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ وَلِيٌ وَلَا شَفِيٌ لَأَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ For them besides him will be no protector and no intercessor that they might become mindful. In this verse, we see the word under highlighted, which means forewarn or caution. The purpose of this revelation is to warn people about the results of their current actions and their ideologies, and let them know the fact that a time is coming in which they will be brought before their Lord, and they will have to give an account of their deeds. At that time, everyone will be in a self-salvation mode. Neither a friend nor the plea of an intercessor can help. Surah al dukhan verse 41, also mentions this. We should abide by the divine laws when we have the chance to save us from any regrets tomorrow. We should all be mindful at all times, stop ourselves from wrongdoing, and do good with pleasure and passion. Let's move on to verse 52. وَلَا تَطْرُدِي الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْآشِي يُرِدُونَ وَجْهَهُ And do not distance yourself with those who call upon their Lord morning and afternoon, seeking His direction. مَا أَلَيْكَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ وَمَا مِنْ حِسَابِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَتَتْرُوا دَاهُمْ فَتَقُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Not upon you is anything of their account, and not upon them is anything of your account. So, were you to distance yourself, you would be of the wrongdoers. In this verse, we see the word تَتْرُودِ which means to distance yourself. And also we see the word وَجْحَهُ highlighted, which means the direction or destination that he has set. This verse says, those who call upon their Lord in the morning and in the evening and come to you only seeking his pleasure, do not turn away such people, 
for your nearness is a source of satisfaction for them. This is also stated in Surah al tawbah verse 103. This verse also continues and says, they are responsible for their own actions and you are responsible for yours. Let's go on to verse 53. Wakazalika Fatanna Badahum Bibadin. And so, we try some of them through others. Liakulu Aha Ulahi Manallahu Alehim Min Bainina. That they might say, is it these whom Allah has favored among us? Alaysallahu bi'alama bishakirin. Is not Allah most knowing of those who are grateful? In this verse, we see the word fatana highlighted. And that means, so we try. Or to make someone go through tribulations, so the reality comes out. Some people are a temptation to others because of their actions in this world. The lives of those who do good deeds are filled with dignity, peace, and gratitude. Seeing the grace of Allah on them, many of those who are tested are surprised by their honor, dignity, peace, and tranquility. However, they are unaware of the fact that one of the main reasons for their condition is shukr or gratitude. And gratitude is to use the blessings and abilities given by Allah for the welfare of Allah's creatures according to the divine laws. Allah promises to reward those who do shukr and are grateful. This is also stated in Surah Ibrahim, verse 7, where it says, And when your Lord declared, If you are grateful, I will surely increase you. But if you deny, indeed, my punishment is severe. Let's go on to verse 54. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِأَيَاتِنَا And when those come to you who believe in our signs, فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبَّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ أَحْرَمَا Say, Peace be upon you. Your Lord has prescribed upon himself mercy. Annahuman Amila Minkum Suan Bijahalatin Summa Tabamin Badhi Wa Aslaha. That any of you who does wrong out of ignorance and then repents after that and corrects himself. Fa Annahu Gafur Rahim. Indeed, he is forgiving and merciful. This verse states, When there come to you people who believe in our signs and have made the pleasure of Allah their goal in life and are striving for it, then give them the good news and tell them that Allah is there for you. Allah has made his mercy mandatory upon himself. If ever a bad deed is done out of ignorance, immediately repent Seek forgiveness, correct your course of direction, and keep moving. Allah, who is forgiving and merciful, will forgive their mistakes and create means of forgiveness. Surah An-Nahl, verse 119, mentions this as well. Let's move on to verse 55. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَسِّلُوا Al-Ayati, and thus do we detail the signs. Walitas Tabina Sabilul Mujrimin, and the way of the criminals will become evident. The purpose of stating the facts so clearly and openly is to make the reality clear to the people. The behavior of the righteous should become prominent in front of them and the path taken by the criminals should also become clear. So that it is easy for one to choose which of these two paths one wants to follow. 
The law of Allah does not prevent anyone from choosing a path. As stated in Surah Al-Nisa, verse 115, where it says, And whoever opposes the messenger after guidance has become clear to him, and follows other than the way of the believers, we will give him what he has taken, and drive him into hell. And evil it is as a destination. This concludes our segment on Ruku 5 and 6 of Surah Al-Anam. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. It is the law of Allah that he does not send punishment on any town until the message of truth reaches the people there. Those who disobey the messengers are first given light punishments so that they realize their mistake and repent for their mistakes and return to the right path. If they still don't do that, then according to the law, a more severe punishment is given. Allah has blessed every human being with all the qualities that are necessary to achieve the true goal of creation. If a person uses his abilities and resources to fulfill his personal desires instead, he deserves punishment. It is the duty of the messengers of Allah to convey his message to the people, to give good news to those who believe in him and do righteous deeds, and to warn those who deny and oppose him of the dire consequences of their deeds. Messengers of Allah are well-wishers of his creation and do not seek reward from anyone. They teach the believers about divine commandments and give them practical guidance to achieve the purpose of life. Allah loves those who struggle with their lives and wealth for the sake of him, and he gives them glad tidings of safety and a good end. Faith, commitment to Allah and the Prophet, وسلم, righteous deeds, forgiveness and repentance, and undivided service of God and his creation are the keys to success. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqallahu al Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyum wa alihi wa sallam.